Thanks a lot. Uh, so yeah, my name is Josh Siegel. I'm a senior scientist at the Allen Institute for Neural Dynamics in Seattle, and um, I'm also a longtime NeuroPixels user, and I oversee the development of the OpenEFIS GUI. So OpenEFIS GUI is a general purpose application for high channel count electrophysiology experiments. Uh, the main software development team consists of two full-time engineers based at the Allen Institute. And the source code includes contributions from almost 50 people from all over the world. Uh, core application is cross-platform, runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, but uh, the NeuroPixels plugin is currently only available for Windows uh, due to limitations of the NeuroPixels API. But at, at some point, we want to also have it run on, on Linux and Mac. So the distinguishing feature of OpenEFIS GUI relative to other software in this domain is its plugin architecture. So this means that all of the data is handled by plugins that are compiled separately from the main application. And so this makes it easy to customize your processing pipeline for different experiments or use the same single chain with a variety of different data sources. Uh, plugins can easily be added and removed via the GUI's built-in plugin installer. Um, there are currently more than 50 officially supported plugins, uh, but if there is some feature that you need for your experiments that requires a new plugin, uh, we're more than happy to help you figure out how to build it. And uh, once you've created a plugin, if you think it'll be useful for others, we can then distribute that through the plugin installer so other people can access it really easily. So GUI was initially developed to work with the OpenEFIS acquisition board shown here in the upper left. Um, this is a low cost open source device that can stream data from tetrodes and passive silicon probes. Uh, so not, not neural pixels, um, but in, uh, the GUI now includes plugins for a variety of other types of hardware, such as the OpenEFIS Onyx system, which was, was mentioned previously. Um, this one can communicate with NeuroPixels, Intan head stages, and miniscopes. Uh, and uh, I think the, the key feature is that it includes a, a torque-free commutator that's optimized for freely moving recordings. Uh, so uh, people have now used this system to record from mice in an open field continuously for weeks uh, with minimal impact on behavior. Um, GUI also supports NeuroNexus XAC systems, uh, Intan's recording controller and, and USB eval board, uh, and most National Instruments DAC cards. Uh, and of course, it also supports all types of NeuroPixels probes via plugins designed for IMAX PXI base stations and the OneBox. So we're currently putting finishing touches on version 1.0 of the OpenEFIS GUI. Uh, it includes a wide range of upgrades, such as a more flexible user interface, smoother graphics and reduce processing latency for closed loop experiments. Uh, but most importantly, we now have an extensive set of tests and benchmarks that allow us to thoroughly validate the software, uh, no matter what combination of, of plugins are being used. Um, and so I will now give a, a demo of this version. Um, and we plan to release this before the end of 2024. But if you are interested in, in trying it out sooner than that, um, definitely get in touch. So uh, this is what the, the user interface looks like when you first load it. Um, if you don't know uh, which plugins you want to use, uh, you can load a default configuration, uh, which we have for acquisition board, file reader, and NeuroPixels. Uh, if we select NeuroPixels, it asks you if you want to use a PXI base station or one box. Click one box. Uh, it now is connecting to the one box that's attached to this computer via USB. And uh, it will detect the, all the connected probes automatically um, and create a little user interface here. Um, before I, I dive into the NeuroPixels configuration, um, I just want to give a quick tour of the overall user interface. So on the left, you have all the plugins that are available, um, and then you can, you can drag these into the signal chain down here in order to customize your processing pipeline. Um, if you click on this graph tab, um, it will show you an overview of, of all the signal chains. So it's possible to have multiple signal chains running in parallel if you have different data sources, for example, NeuroPixels and National Instruments. Um, and for each plugin, uh, you can see the data streams that are available. So in, in OpenEFIS, a data stream is any group of channels that are sampled synchronously. Um, so for example, this one box has one probe connected to it. Um, this one has 384 channels at 30 kilohertz. All of the samples in this stream are guaranteed to be, be synchronized, but they're not guaranteed to be synchronized with um, other streams that are recorded in parallel. For example, the, the ADCs on this one box of which there are 12. So I'll, I'll talk about synchronization in, in a minute. Um, but yeah, all, all of these streams propagate to uh, downstream plugins, for example, RecordNode, 
LFP viewer, which allows you to, to visualize the data, uh, bandpass filter, um, and, and some of these plugins have different parameters that you can change. Uh, for example, the bandpass filter, you can change the, the low cut and, and high cut. Um, and e each of all of these parameters are going to be set independently for each stream. So for example, for the ADCs, you want to turn off the filter entirely. You can select no, no channels here, and it will disable the, the, the filter. Um, so if you now click on the OneBox plugin editor, it brings up a more extensive uh, interface for, for changing uh, the, the settings of this probe. Um, if you want to disable the data, uh, data streaming for a particular probe entirely, you can press this, uh, this button here, and that will um, turn, turn this uh, little icon red and indicate that, that that probe is not sending data. So it will automatically connect to all the probes that are connected to your system. But um, if there are some that you don't want to stream data for, you can easily disable them. Um, the easiest here is like a, a little overview of the probe. Um, you can use this electrode preset drop down menu to uh, change uh, which shank is selected or uh, select a group of channels across different shanks. You can also click and drag on different sites in order to enable them. Um, if we then start acquisition um, and click this probe signal view, you can see live, uh, live visualization of the activity on the probe. Um, and so the data from this probe is going directly into this record node, uh, which is what writes data. And the, the data, the, the data format is uh, what's known as a .dat file, which is essentially the same as a spike GLX bin file. Um, the metadata that's stored along with the probe is a, a little bit different format than spike GLX, but um, using tools like spike interface, it's, it's easy to load mm -hmm. data from either spike GLX or, or OpenEPIS. Um, and so one important thing to, to pay attention to in recording is uh, whether your streams are synchronized. Um, and so there's this little synchronization monitor down here, um, which um, will turn green if, if all the streams are receiving a hardware input that indicates um, that they are, are synchronized. And um, in the case of the, the one box, um, you can change this uh, SMA um, output, or th this SMA connector to either serve as an input. For example, it takes a signal from Arduino or serve as an output and generate its own one hertz signal. And if it's serving as output, it will also send that signal to the um, to the ADC channels, and this will turn green, indicating that these streams are synchronized in real time, and all the timestamps that are written by the record node um, will be pre-synchronized. Um, so we can take a look at the LFP viewer, uh, split this vertically. Um, now you can see the um, probe data and the, the one the ADC data side by side. Um, you can see this one hertz uh, sync signal overlaid in yellow. Um, here we can change the, the channel height, um, change the, the voltage range. Um, another super useful thing about the LP viewer is if you pause the display, um, you can scroll backwards in time. Um, so you can uh, see what happened previously in your, your data uh, without actually pausing acquisition. So then you double click on it and it will, and it will restart again. Um, so that's, that's useful in, in case you missed something. Um, the last thing I want to show is um, the, the Pro Viewer. So um, if we take, uh, I want to show it with some actual NeuroPixels data. So I'm going to delete this, this one box and replace it with File Reader um, and then load up some previously saved NeuroPixels data. Um, and then in the, this Pro Viewer interface, um, it will display the data as a heat map. So uh, uh, time along this axis and channels along this axis. I think this is one of the most useful ways to, to visualize neural pixels data. Um, makes it really easy to see the different structures that, you're, um, that you are recording from. In this example, it's a probe that's inserted through cortex, hippocampus, and thalamus. Um, and this also integrates with pinpoint so you can overlay the, the brain regions that you are recording from. All right, so um, yeah, so just to wrap up, um, if you want to download OpenEFIS and try it out, uh, you can go to openefizorg slash GUI. Uh, source code is uh, obviously all open on uh, GitHub. Um, documentation for, um, yeah, I talked about some, some new features today that aren't uh, up on the, the documentation site yet, but they, they will be as soon as the, the new version is released. Um, but there's extensive documentation for all available plugins at openefizorg.github.io. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in testing out uh, version 1.0 a little bit early, be happy to give you a preview of that. 
or if you have any other questions, um, we're always available at support at openecos.org.